Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Camelita Podcast. This is where you learn to live like a champion. On today's episode, I have got a gentleman that I believe is the champion of listening and the champion of sound. And I'll tell you a little bit about him and who he is. Julian Treasure, and I love his last name, is a sound and communication expert. He's an author, an international speaker, a TEDx, a TEDx talk, a TED speaker. I mean, the list goes on and it's endless. He has been featured in The Times, The Economist, um, international TV and radio stations across the globe. And listen to this, 130 million views, 130 million on 10. That's more than Elon Musk, I'm just saying. Um, and he's won global awards, his book, Sound Business, which he will tell us about, and how to be heard, the secrets for you to be an even more powerful speaker and how to listen effectively has guided tons of people globally in how to truly use effective communication skills. His audio company, The Sound Agency, which he'll tell us about, is also helping major brands on um, across the globe with their customer experience. And more importantly, he is a husband, a father, and a man who is on a mission. So welcome to the Camry to Podcast, Mr. Julian Treasure. Well, what an intro, Camelita. I am uh, hope I'm going to be able to live up to that. <laughs> so you better, Julian. Now listen, firstly, why in heck did you choose Scotland? You are, I only have a Scottish accent, so I clearly know you're not from there originally. Why Scotland? I've been coming up here to Orkney, which is an archipelago off the north coast of Scotland, actually, across the Pentland Firth. I've been coming here since I was 16. My mum bought a house wow. up here way back then uh, so that's nearly 50 years now and um i loved it i mean i fell in love with it when i came here for the first time so i've i've been coming back and back to see my mum, who's gone now my brother lives here he came and lived here with my mum at the end of her life and uh then i met my beloved up here as well and we now have two lovely daughters one of eight and one of one and a half who are enjoying the beautiful air and the amazing place that Orkney is. No, oh, and in, indeed Scotland is beautiful. So Julian, before we get into the story about having more views than Elon Musk, I'm just saying, um, before we get into that story, I kind of want to understand sort of the backstory. What were you doing prior to sound, to communication skills? Was this always something that meant something to you or did you fall into it because of something? Give us the backstory. Well, yes, yeah, sound has always been something I've been very conscious of. I think some people have sight as their primary sense. Some people have sound. Some people have touch. Uh, for me, it's always been sound. It's always been the ears. Uh, I've been a musician since I was about 12. Mm. And uh, my instrument, originally keyboard, but then I secretly switched to drum lessons and didn't oh. tell my parents. <laughs> um, so I've been a drummer for many, many, many years playing in bands. And I think if you're a musician playing in a band or an orchestra and with any other people, you develop a kind of multi-track, very attentive listening. Yeah. You have to hear every, everybody else at the same time. You have to pay attention to them all. Otherwise, you're not a very good player. You're not part of the group. There's a kind of gestalt listening there. And so, yeah, that's always been part of my life. I've always been listening to the world. I remember lying in bed when I was very young, listening to the sound of rainfall hitting leaves outside the window and being entranced by that. Mm -hmm. Still one of my favorite sounds. Um, so I then had a big career selling advertising, uh, running magazines, <clears throat> becoming a publisher of magazines, I started my own business, producing magazines for brands um, and worked for some very big brands, um, including you know Apple, Microsoft, Lexus oh, and so forth, wow. producing beautiful magazines for them. and. In 2002, uh, late 2002, I sold that business. Well, I was with a lovely company, but I sold it. I wanted to move on. Mm -hmm. And I started a company called The Sound Agency. And it was to bring the two halves of me together because I'd had 20 years plus, more than that, of, of dealing with marketing and understanding brands and communication for businesses. At the same time, I was conscious the world didn't sound very good. Okay, stop right there. Uh, I really want to get, I don't want anybody to miss this. Was there a trigger for you to go from 
magazines, branding, to now song? Was it that you missed something or you were missing something? Or what, what was the trigger for you to say, you know what? I think I want to do, I want to go this route now. What was it? Well, I think like a lot of entrepreneurs, you don't necessarily design the chasm you have to leap. There's a leap of faith in being an entrepreneur. You know, I think that's the difference between entrepreneurs and other people. Yeah. Uh, most people stand there going after you. No, I think I'll stay on this side, actually. I'll be, I'll be fine just here. And the entrepreneur goes, well, I might make it. It has a big run up and lots of them don't, uh, but some of them do. And for me, it's not that I made the made the, the the chasm there. It was made when somebody offered to buy my previous company, and we went uh, into that negotiation. And you know, my life changed. Mm -hmm. And I then I was, you know, shall I take the leap? Shall I go for what I really am passionate about in life, which is sound? Right. And that is what I did. So I I started the sound agency, and the basic thesis there was what does your brand sound like how does your brand sound because nobody was thinking about that they you know brands have great big books about how they, how they look logos and typefaces and colors and everything like that how many pages are about sound none so stop stop right there then when you say sound are you talking about how we how we how we how we speak in front of people what people hear from us our marketing how does it come across Give us an example of all of what you are doing with corporate companies, with entrepreneurs, with businesses. T tell us all, all of what does sound actually mean? Well, for a business, it's multifaceted. It's not so much about the voice, although that's very important. Some businesses have really important voices associated with them. It might be a voiceover that they've been using for years in advertising. Mm. Uh, it might be the voice of the CEO or somebody who's highly associated with the business. Yeah. But there are many other sounds too. You walk into a corporate reception, what do you hear? What do you hear in the offices? Uh, do you, you know, delivery trucks. Uh, music that might be very, very associated with the brand. Yeah. Uh, there's the telephone. Press one for this, press two for that. How many times have we slammed down the phone at those terrible systems <laughs> designed by engineers, not marketing people? Yeah. And very rarely are they planned through. You know, um, old people, yeah. older people hate those. I'm a, I class myself there. <laughs> and we have an aging demographic everywhere in the world. So, I mean, those systems mm -hmm. need to be very seriously thought about i'm absolutely convinced that probably trillions of dollars are lost every year by those phones being slammed down or cut off in frustration by people going oh, i've been here for 15 minutes or I, none of those are the option i want so that's you know that's sound there are a lot of businesses that only exist in sound in that way you speak to them on the phone so many many things i suppose at the heart of it the dna is a thing called a sonic logo okay. a short sound that sums up the business in the same way that their visual logo does yeah so uh, the the iconic one i suppose to mention is intel i bet if i asked you to draw intel's logo you'd struggle but many many people listening to this will be going oh yeah da, 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 da. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. classic and that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars to that right. business It's a big, big part of their brand. So whether it's McDonald's or, uh, you know, loads of businesses you can think of, which have got an iconic sound that's associated with them that you hear all over the place. OK, stop so right there. Stay right there. This is powerful. This is really powerful because we always we've always been taught it is the words. It is the things that we see about the brand is brand look, brand color, brand feel. Now you're telling us it is equally important or even possibly more important, the actual sound that is, is being said, what, what people are hearing, because when they hear that sound, they, as you said, they may forget the logo, but when they hear that sound, they'll know exactly like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we know exactly who that is. Even we don't have to say it, we don't have to draw it correctly, but we know. Why That's is it. it that then? So well, hearing many is companies are not taught this. Why is it that most businesses do not have that really down? Why, why, why? Okay, that's two big questions, and I'll try <laughs> and answer them both. Uh, the answer to the first one, well, the second one actually, why is it ignored? Mm. Because I think we have a very ocular culture now. We've moved away from 
sound being critical to us. You know, 10,000 years ago, if you were living um, and sharing the world with some rather large beasts, sound was a matter of survival, just as it is for most species in the world. You know, it's the primary warning sense because you can hear what's behind you. Yes. You can't see what's behind you. So sound goes into our brains faster than our visual sense does, much faster. And we respond to it viscerally and very fast. So it can change the way you, you your body, you know, your breathing, heart rate, hormone secretions, everything gets changed by sound. How you feel, you know, think of how music affects you, how well you can think. If there's noise around you, it's very distracting and hard to think. Mm -hmm. And also what you do. Mm -hmm. So there's now lots of research showing that sound is so powerful. And yet we invented writing like 5,000 years ago, maybe less. Well, speaking and listening have been around for 100,000 years plus complex wow. language. And is yet... It, but So just stay right there again, Julian. Is it because we cannot monetize it as much as we could monetize other things? Or is it because the world has become too noisy that we're not listening? What What is the real real reason behind it yeah i think noise is a big problem and uh, so is the technology that we've developed over the past 50 years mm -hmm. certainly uh, where most of the communication mechanisms we've invented are about using fingers and eyes it's text-based uh, so we tend to default to that now you know and there's a lot of research now about kids who would prefer to text somebody to ask them out than do it in person because it's less scary, <laughs> you know, the rejection might be less frightening. Uh, so you know, the, there is a, a, a lot of it's about the eyes taking over. You could get spiritual wow. about this. Hearing is much more of a yin sense. It's more female, it's more receptive, it's passive. Sound goes into your ears and touches you inside your head. The eyes more yang, more directed, uh, you know, you know where you're looking. Mm -hmm. uh, you have no earlids, so you can't shut it out. And yet we spend so much time ignoring the sound yeah. around us, suppressing our consciousness of it. Uh, being, you know, you, you see people, I see people in streets having a conversation next to somebody who's drilling. And I think, why don't you just move? <laughs> <laughs> That's, we don't. You know, you'll get people probably proposing marriage in a noisy Starbucks or something. No, why don't you go somewhere quiet yes. and do that? So we, we just mean. accept this noise and we, we kind of get numb, I think, a lot of the so, time. What do you teach? How can we, from your, from your, and I know you're bringing out this new book, which you tell us about in a minute, and the other two books. What can we do as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as, as people, what can we do to, to really allow ourselves to listen, to truly hear what is not being said? Because a lot of times if, if I, I teach people on sales. It's very important sometimes, all the time, when what when what people are not saying because we are effectively listening, we could sell ten times more. Yeah. What do you teach, and how can people change this paradigm now? Tell us about your book, your program, your you know whatever. Just just tell us because this is really powerful. I in a hundred percent agreement. But I wish I met you like twenty years ago. But anyway, this is brilliant. Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us. Well, let's start with the difference between a corporation or a business or a brand and a person. Mm. Uh, this was the realization that hit me as I went through delivering my five TED talks. They started out talking about sound in general and how it affects people and so forth. And then I started to think, well, hang on. The reason organizations are so bad at sound is because people are, because organizations are just groups of people. So if you stick a whole bunch of people who aren't listening into a company, you get a company that's not listening. And that is what happens mainly. Yeah. So there's this obsession with how things look, not how they sound. Architects, for example, design entirely about how things look. They spend five years training in your country and they might spend perhaps a day or four, if they're lucky, on sound in that five years. Wow. So it's not surprising. It's not really considered. Ask an architect to show you their work and they'll show you a picture or a, a model or something nothing about sound and yet we live in these spaces and we exist in five senses not just one so it is it, it, it's it's not just the companies it's the people as well and the basic thesis here is that we need to start listening you know listening is a skill 
It's a skill, not a capability. People get that confused all the time. They think hearing and listening are the same thing and they're not, they're very, very different. You hear everything. When you listen, you pay attention to certain things. You select things to pay attention to and then you make them mean something. And that is largely say, say, elective. Say that again, say that again. That is really powerful. You select certain things to pay attention to mm -hmm. and you make them mean something. So my definition of listening is making meaning from sound. That's wow. what it's all about. It. It's a I mental it. process, mental, not a capability. And just, you know, the same for an organization. If you're not conscious that you're doing something as a human being when you're listening, it's work. It's a skill, it's something you can master, and it's really important. The same for organizations. If they're not conscious that they're not listening, they become completely immune to what's going on around them and lose contact with their customers. How then, how then does that, again, it's exactly what you're talking about customers. How then mm. does this really negatively impact the bottom line? Because at the end of the day, when you're in business, you, you, you're in business to make money. You're in mm. business to support, you know, supplies, meet a demand, support someone's need. You're in business ideally to make money. When you are not effectively listening, what can happen to your bottom line, seriously? Yeah, oh, really, really bad things. First of all, you could be making a lot of noise that's in the way. And a lot of what the sound agency does is about having congruent sound. In other words, you know, you've got this visual brand. It's all about being whatever it is. You know, your brand values are these. And yet you're making noise, which is completely counter theoretical to that. It's, it's undermining all of your visuals and it costs a huge amount of money to erode your brand in that way. So if you line things up, and I'm not talking just necessarily about sight and sound. You could do smell as well. There's a big fragrance marketing industry out there. Although you can't say specific things with smell and you can't broadcast it. So I think sight and sound are the two major ones. If you line them up and they're pointing in the same direction, you get a thing called super additivity, where the senses sort of entwine and magnify each other. And you get a far deeper and bigger impact on people so that's one thing is about the effectiveness of marketing the effectiveness of spaces like shops malls showrooms offices you know branded spaces how effective are they do they sound as they could uh, are they sounding just as good as they possibly could then you've got on top of that sort of removing the noise you've got the power of sound in sales conversations, the power of sound on the telephone, the power of, the, of sound to engage people. You've yeah. got social media now, you've got YouTube, yeah. uh, you've got all sorts of mechanisms and media through which you can use sound. Is it recognizable? Are you consistent? Is it actually congruent with the brand that you are saying you are? And very often it isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we train salespeople in what to say a lot of the time, but not so much in how to say it. Yeah. And certainly not in how to listen. And, you know, you, you've said this a couple of times. I totally agree with you. I think if you talk to any great salesperson, they'll say the most important part of a sales conversation is the listening. Yeah. Because if you don't listen to that customer, how would you really know what their pain is? Okay. How will you be able to empathize with them and to become partners considering a problem that's in front of both of you not mm. adversaries where you're trying to get something out of them they don't want to give you julian do you think the pandemic and the follow-up from the pandemic has actually helped people to highlight that bit of their lives a little bit more since since we had a chance to slow down were we listening more or was the fact that tv or whatever else netflix whatever else became a bigger noise or was it that people, you know, when they went out walking, they sort of really enjoyed listening to nature? Has anything changed? I hope so, Camelita. I mean, one doesn't know. I don't think anybody's done a survey on this. The world definitely got quieter during the pandemic. Transport shut down. People stayed at home. There was far less movement going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the sound of movement is one of the biggest noises we make as a species. Um, so yeah the world got quieter and it's quite possible that a lot of people experienced tranquility for the first time in cities you know walking around streets where there weren't cars and buses and air brakes hissing and so forth and people drilling and whatever 
so maybe there there are people who've made that connection and of course there was also working from home which yeah. is kind of a two-edged sword i mean it's great yeah, then this is what we've seen in the research since it's great working from home if you have a lovely home and it's really yeah. uh, you know it's peaceful and there are spaces where you can work but if you're in a tiny apartment with five children uh wfh is not so much fun and <laughs> those people are much keener to get back to the office as soon as possible whereas with people in the big houses who are sitting on a veranda with a coffee and working on their lap I don't really don't want to go back to the office. So it no. very much depends on what your home is. And uh, I, I'm sure that's true of whether people have started listening more or not. Maybe some people have got, as you say, addicted to binge watching on Netflix yeah. or whatever it might be. Well, that's not listening, really. No. So, OK, I want to ask two last questions because I know you've got to run as well. I want to with your book, Sound Business and then you know, and How to Be Heard, Secrets, for powerful speaking and listening. Combined, can you give us four of your top tips that we can do today? People will, I'm, I'm gonna tell them how they can go and get the book, of course. What can we do now? What can we do today based on, uh, on the principles in those two books? And I'm gonna tell us about the new one that's coming. What are your top four we all need to start doing today? Well, the first and most important one is listen and that is a conscious act so understanding being conscious that listening is a skill setting about you know having the determination to set about improving your listening is number one and you know it's actually number one to ten probably it is the most important thing R appreciating how poorly we listen and the, the benefits to your health effectiveness well-being uh, happiness of being a great listener uh, tremendous so that's number one Number two, understand that speaking and listening are in a circular relationship. So the way I speak affects the way you listen, the way you listen affects the way I speak, and the way I speak affects the way you speak, and so on and so on. So listening to the other person is very much part of being a powerful speaker. And this is true for organizations as well as for individuals. Mm -hmm. So understanding that, the, there's a key question there. What's the listening I'm speaking into? And if you get into the practice of asking that question, because everybody's listening is different. Yeah. And this is a really big transformative realization. The biggest mistake I see people making, apart from that, not listening at all, is assuming everybody listens like I do. They don't. Mm -hmm. They really don't. Mm -hmm. Because your listening is shaped. There are lots of filters that you gather as, as you go through life and grow and learn and listen and pick things up and put other things down. So we have prejudices, we have biases, we have values, attitudes, beliefs, we have language we speak, we have a culture that we're born into and so forth, I'm sorry. And um, so all of those things fashion our listening mm -hmm. and create a listening that's unique to me. You've got your unique listening and it's a grave mistake to think everybody listens like I do. So asking the question, what's the listening is polite and very very productive wow. you might have a very slow aged listening you might have a young naive listening mm -hmm. you're speaking into you might have an aggressive know-it-all listening mm -hmm. you know there are lots and lots of listenings that you could be speaking into mm -hmm. and once you subtly assess the listening which you'll get just by asking the question what's the listening mm -hmm. it can change the way you deliver to make it much more appropriate so you hit the bullseye instead of missing the target altogether so that's the, the second one I would say is, is ask the question, what's the listening? Third, do you know, I give speeches um, around the world to rooms full of chief executives and senior managers. Mm -hmm. And I often ask them the question, how many of you present or use your voice professionally? A forest of hands goes up. Good. How many of you have had formal vocal training? Three or four. I just go, why? Wow. What is going on here? This is an incredible instrument, the human voice. It's the instrument we all play. Wow. Wow. And so few people who use their voice and for whom their voice is really, really critical in their outcomes in life yeah. have set about getting a coach, getting trained and becoming a master of that instrument. So 
get a vocal coach. And that. if you can't get a vocal coach, you know, video or record yourself and work on it yourself. But that's it's much better to, you know, Google voice coach, drama coach, singing coach, presentation coach, whatever. Find somebody, you know, phone a few up, see the, the ones that you ring some sort of connection with, go and have a tryout session with a few, choose one and then work with them over a period of time. And they will work on your projection, your delivery, uh, your posture, you know, your breathing, all of the important things which go into making a powerful speaker. Wow. Uh, so that's the third thing. And I'd say the fourth thing is um, it's about the foundations of powerful speaking, really, uh, which I talked about in my fifth TED talk, which spelled the word hail. This yeah, is I somewhere to stand. Some, it's something to stand on if you want to be a powerful speaker. And those four things are honesty. So that's being mm -hmm. clear and straight in what you say. Authenticity, which is being yourself, not mm -hmm. pretending to be somebody else. Integrity, which is being your word. Mm -hmm. If you say it, you're going to do it. Yep. And love, which is not romantic love, but it's compassion, if you like. It's wishing people well and having compassion for them so that you can validate them, which also is incredibly important in selling, for example. Mm. I fundamentally disagree with what you're saying, but I really can see why you would believe that. I like that. that <laughs> That is compassion. And that yes. means that we're on, on the same side. I'm not adversarial. I'm not butting horns with you. I'm not saying you're wrong. Making people wrong is very damaging, uh, very serious in selling. And even sitting here thinking that somebody's wrong doesn't work very well. Uh, whereas saying, oh, I can really, I mean, you don't have to say the first bit. I really disagree with you. You can say the second bit. I, I totally understand why you would think that. And now let's see if we can solve that. So those four things, honesty, authenticity, integrity, and love, stand on those. And I think everything goes far better. Wow. I just Should I tell you what I'd hear? Just that one thing alone. If all of us just do that a little bit more every day, our humanity will be the eight, all eight billion of us. Will do, will <laughs> that would do. be good. I'm telling you, it's, yeah. Yeah, we we all need to. We all need to. Um, I want to ask you one last question. If you, in fact, no. Tell me about the new book. Tell us about the new book, and then tell us how we're going to get the, the existing <laughs> ones. Tell us about the new one that's coming out. Well, the new one. I'm so excited. I've been commissioned by a, a major book company, uh, Quercus, which is part of Hachette, to write a book. Uh, it's going to be called Everything Is Sound, and it's all about the wonder of sound. And there is so much depth to this book. You know, I'm writing about sound on other planets. I'm writing about sound in the universe. I'm writing wow. about the sound of every animal on this planet, the sound of humanity, uh, listening, hearing, uh, and how different they are and so forth. So there's, there's just tons and tons in there. I'm so excited. It'll be out in spring 24. So that's, you know, it's very much a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, the two books that are out, Sound Business is for anybody running a business or in a business who wants to know about how to use sound to, to make profit. And the, um, the book, How to Be Heard, is about personal communication skills, about how to be a great speaker and how to be a great listener, including presentation skills mm -hmm. from somebody who's given hundreds and hundreds of talks. Oh, <laughs> so how can people get them? Because like I'm going to be telling everybody they need to get this. How can people get them? Well, the books are available in all the usual places. I mean, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever you go. Uh, yeah. I think actually there's a deal. I just tweeted today. I think that the publisher of How to Be Heard has got a, a deal on where there's a 30% off oh. uh, if you go to their website. So I think that's on for another few weeks. Um, but have a look at my Twitter for that or, um, or LinkedIn. Um, and if anybody wants to know more about me and what I'm up to, the website yeah. is juliantreasure.com. And actually on there, there's a, a really nice thing you can download, which is a, a video I made with an American speaker coach called Neil Gordon, where we mm. pull apart my TED talk that got those incredible number of views. Yeah. I think it's the sixth most viewed TED talk of all time. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Elon. Anyway, um, so yes, we pull it apart and analyze, just ask the question, why was this talk so successful? Yeah. What did I do right? And what can people learn? 
if they've got their own presentations or yeah. sales presentations or you know standing on stage in front of thousands of people whatever it might be mm. there's a lot to learn and so you, that's well, you, also have a, you also have a master class you, you, that people can buy or uh, yeah uh, yeah there's an uh, online course or something yeah yes yeah there's my online course which there's links to from my web pages uh, seven and a half hours of everything I know about speaking and listening wow. skills in nine chapters. And uh, that's also available. So yeah, lots of resources are there and you yeah. know, swing by the website and pick up that free video and, and uh, check us out. Yes, well, I am going to be telling everybody they need to swing by and why they need <laughs> to get there because yeah, this is, you know, I'm, 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 I'm listening to you and I'm sort of visualizing the sounds in the background mm. of what, when I go for a walk, this why I like to go for a walk at this place, because I like, not because I can walk, but I like to hear the sounds of the birds yeah. and the animals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now I realize why I like to go there. And it is not just for the walk. It no, I, and when actually the research now shows that nature sound, bird song, running water, rainfall, these sounds are really good for us. They're therapeutic okay. and they're actually good for your health. So it's the right thing to do. Oh, gosh. We can talk for hours, but I know you've got to go. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Julian. I, yeah, I love it. I've got so many people I need to introduce you to, to be on their podcast. Let me tell you. Um, oh, thank you. Because this the, this needs to be told. It is something that we've lost as a mm. as a as humanity. Um, it's something that I sort of trying to slow down and get back to things that I used to do before, mm. um, and really spending time with myself and spending time with listening and on one of your TED talks or one of your one of your your TEDx talks you talked about that whole thing about being silent yeah just yeah, just yeah. Being silent for a little bit just being silent and how powerful being silent is I didn't mm. I, I, and it is my biggest ideas have come when I was silent yes well reacquainting ourselves with silence very important so yeah I mean if you want a number five thing try and get a few minutes of silence every day and yeah. it resets resets your ears recalibrates you and and it is such an important place where you meet yourself and mm -hmm. which you know a lot of people find challenging if they've been numbing themselves with external you know, the world is so noisy we've got so many organizations vying for our attention that's what they want they want our attention all the time so putting them aside and paying attention to ourselves or to mm -hmm. another human being you know, Scott Peck said, you cannot truly listen to another human being and do anything else at the same time. Wow. Well, that's a challenge. That's a challenge, isn't it? Wow. My husband would beg to differ, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's worth a worth a practice. And, uh, you know, you can't do it all the time, but it's great. It's a great gift to give somebody your undivided attention. It really is. I will, I will tell my husband I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Julian, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Um, oh my God, this was this was so good. Uh, thank you, Emilita. It's been it's so been real good. fun. Been a, a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Well, guys, look, you've heard it here from Julian Treasure. Look, this this has been one of the one of the highlights of my podcast um, episodes. I really sort of really enjoyed. You talked about sound and being very conscious of and listening. You know, I can talk for England, Trinidad, and the Caribbean put together. But I have learned to listen. And he talked about that whole thing about this, this, this sonic area of our lives and the music behind our brands as an entrepreneur. What is the default music? What do people hear? Not just what people see. Um, what, are, what are people listening to when, when it pertains to your company? We can hear or we can listen. And he talked about that paying attention, that make thing, make, make them mean something when you hear people. You know, just just being conscious, not listening in in by the way, but really truly listen. And with his sound agency company, you know, talks a lot about so how sound undermines the visuals. How you can really apply that into your business to help your your your, your clients to help you make more money to have more effective marketing. We all want that as entrepreneurs, and that power of how sounds helps. In conversations with sales, we all want to make more money. People, come on, look. And he finished on the four top tips and he gave us a bonus. Number one, listen, consciously acting. Number two, speaking and listening. Number three, you that formal of voice training. If you need it, get a coach, get someone to help you. Number four, heal, honesty, authenticity, integrity, love with, with compassion. And number five, bonus, silence. 
just being very quiet. If you are serious about changing the paradigm of your business and your life with this information, go to Amazon right now and look for sound business and also look for how to be heard, the secrets for powerful speaking and listening. Or if you just want to reach out to him, perhaps you want to book him for your, your, for your company, your business, just go to juliantreasure.com. On his website, you would also get an online course, seven week, seven hour course. You can listen to it in your own good time and get it done. Everything, as he says, is sound. It is the wonder that we all need to move forward. And his new book, Everything is Sound, that's coming out. You really want to get in touch with him to see if you can get a copy of that before. I'm sure he's going to have a pre-order. Um, but go on to the website, juliantreasure.com. Get the books, get the programs, get it done. This is Kamalita here from the Kamalita Podcast saying, I'll see you soon. And you know, I will see you at the top. That's it.